not sure, the human heart was designed to handle a lot of puppy fussing. That little furry thing is so cute. We just hate to see they're struggling, whining, crying, and barking. Am I right? But at the same time, we have to teach the puppy to have some alone time too. But how much crying and fussing is too much? Is this separation anxiety? How do we prevent separation anxiety from forming? These are great questions, and I bet there's even more where those ones came from. Today's video is gonna help you figure out if your puppy has a serious case of anxiety, if this is normal for a puppy, and what to do about all the above. Michelle here with How to Train a Dream Dog. I appreciate that you've tuned into my channel today. And if you appreciate the great info you're getting, please hit that subscribe button. All right, let's get started with the big question. What is separation anxiety and what can I do about it? Well, the short answer is separation anxiety is when dogs are unable to find comfort when they're left alone or separated from their family members. Experts estimate that this condition exists in about 14% of dogs. True separation anxiety looks different than normal puppy complaining and fussing, which is common when a puppy first comes home and definitely common when first beginning crate training. So that probably leads you to another question. How can I tell if my puppy is just fussing or if he has separation anxiety? <laughs> yep, that's a good one. Now, I want you to think of this like a spectrum. On one side, we have a puppy who is confident in the crate or away from their humans. On the other side, we have separation anxiety. There's a lot of room in between those two sides. Maybe your puppy isn't confident quite yet, but that doesn't mean she is in distress. She could be feeling discomfort or simply seeking attention. This is a visual we use with the students enrolled in my online course. Now you can see some of the behaviors that are associated with these various stages between confidence and anxiety. So for example, when a puppy is uncomfortable, you're likely to see whining and even some scratching. A more serious case of this or too much time in this uncomfortable zone, and it could lead to something we call separation distress. This is something that definitely needs attention, but it's not quite separation anxiety yet. Distress could look like extensive howling and barking, and a little more vocalization. If left unchecked, however, separation distress could lead to a serious case of separation anxiety. This is a general guideline of most common characteristics and behaviors that are often associated with these emotions. So your dog may or may not exhibit all of these, or she may have some unique ones that you figure out. She may also exhibit some of these at some times of the day and other behaviors at other times. Dogs are unique beings and they're not cookie cutter. And as you probably guessed, the further you go into the spectrum towards separation anxiety, the harder the condition is to treat. That's why we recommend you get started right away with crate training games and games to build up puppy independence while left alone. Now, it's far easier to prevent behaviors than to deal with them when they become habit. We have a common saying in the trainer world, behaviors become habits and habits are hard to break. So if you don't want it to become a habit, don't let the behavior continue. We'll talk a little bit more about prevention in just a minute. Now, if you have a young puppy and she's only been home a few days, you're probably seeing those discomfort signals in her behavior. Now, I recently fostered this cutie named Feta. She was eight weeks old when she was with me, and yep, I definitely saw this discomfort. Now, if your puppy is young like Feta was, she had a huge change in her life, and she's probably quite startled that she's away from mama dog, litter mates, and anything else she's ever known. So of course, there's going to be some complaining. During this time, we wanna strike the balance of helping the puppy learn to self-soothe, but also not allowing the puppy to stress too much that it could lead to separation distress or anxiety. What is the balance? This is gonna vary for each individual puppy, but I'm gonna give you some help when we talk about preventing anxiety. It will be important for you to do your homework, like watching this video, and understand the signs of a puppy who's okay to just complain a bit versus a puppy who needs the human to get involved. Now I used this graphic I showed earlier to recognize the specific characteristics just keep in mind, those are just behavior examples. And 
you have to layer this information with the knowledge of your individual puppy. Soon, you're gonna to start to learn what is normal for your puppy and more importantly, what's abnormal. That'll help you know when to get involved more or when to let the puppy work through those emotions on her own. So getting to know your puppy comes with time and training, so don't feel bad if you've just started learning her habits. And if you're paying attention, you're gonna get there soon. The other piece of homework you can do is understand how dogs communicate. Caring for an anxious pup has to be accompanied with a strong understanding of canine body language because that's how she's going to communicate and you're going to have to speak her language if you want to figure her out. Before I give you my five tips for preventing separation anxiety, I'm going to give you another reminder to subscribe. And if you really, really love this content, feel free to show your support with one of those super thanks. My team and I work real hard to put this content together for you each week. So maybe a small token of appreciation will help this great content to be able to continue week after week. All right, so recent canine science has found that the cry it out method is not an effective way of helping a puppy learn to self-soothe. But a short duration of fussing and whining might be necessary before your puppy decides to give up and take a nap. Much like a child who gets bored enough to find their own things to do. We sometimes just have to get over that peak. But how long is too long for the whining? It's hard to have an exact answer on how long we should let our pups cry. I mean, our human brain wants a very specific number like seven minutes or 11 minutes, but it really depends on the situation and the specific behavior that your puppy's exhibiting. You should know that you increase the likelihood of a dog developing separation distress if she practices barking or panicking for more than about 10 minutes. Now, that doesn't mean that at the 11 minute mark, your dog's gonna develop separation anxiety. And it also doesn't mean that if you let her cry for nine minutes, she won't. Simply put, the longer and more intensely she's fussing, the more likelihood of developing separation anxiety. It's a dangerous path to go down, so I wanna focus on preventing it. All right, here are five tips for preventing separation anxiety. Tip number one, meet your puppy's mental and physical needs. Before asking your puppy to go in the crate and hang out quietly and calmly, first we have to do our due diligence to make sure all of her needs are met. Now this includes social time with humans, exercise, enrichment, food, and potty breaks. And although exercise is really important, naps are also really, really important. Watching the schedule and helping her get down for a nap in time and not too late can really help your puppy settle better. So if a puppy gets overtired, she's gonna be a lot harder to calm down. Keep a log and watch your puppy's wake window so you know when it's about time for a nap. This is also gonna help you cut down on unwanted behaviors that typically occur when the puppy's battery is getting lower. So I talked a lot about that in the biting video, so you can head over there to watch it after you're done here. Tip number two, use tools to help create a calming environment. Now, there are a lot of crate training tools that can help your puppy feel comfortable in the crate or being away from you. These are gonna include things like a snuggle puppy inside the crate or on top of the crate if she's a chewer. Number two, a crate cover. Number three, using a white noise machine and playing calming music. Number four could be making sure you do a cool down activity before she's gone in the crate. Number five, restricting vigorous exercise and play before rest time. I recommend you have at least a 15 to 30 minute buffer, depending on the age of your puppy. Number six, providing a calming activity like a chewing or a licking activity. Number seven, ensuring the crate is comfortable, which includes the appropriate size, a good temperature, and making sure it's in the right location for your puppy to rest. Now, I know that was a lot of information all at once, but I'm gonna send you to two videos after this one. So you can get more great info on crate tools and helping your puppy settle down for a nap. Okay, let's move on to preventing anxiety tip number three. Train for confidence. Now we also have to work on this confidence outside of the time the puppy needs to use the crate. Now we do this with fun training games designed to create positive associations with the crate or the pen. So understanding what each puppy's threshold is for being alone and working slowly to increase the duration and the distance away is how we train for this. Inside 30 Days to Puppy Perfection, the program we have, there are several games to help your puppy build up the confidence as you step away from the pen or the crate and increase how long she's in there. Now, many students have actually found these games to be the key that turns puppy discomfort into tolerance and finally, confidence in the crate. Tip number four, practice safe alone time. So make sure your puppy experiences safe alone time on a regular basis. Your puppy shouldn't be with you 24 seven. I'm looking at you work from home puppy parents. Now you can start with a one minute session of just walking in and out of the room or the house. Now it might be 
less than one minute. That threshold is up to your puppy to determine. One of the games I mentioned above focuses specifically on building the duration of stepping away. We call it the Mississippi game. Believe it or not, a few of my students started at the one second mark for stepping away from their puppy. Yes, literally, they played the game for one second. I know that sounds like it'll take forever to work up to the time you need to get to groceries or go to work. But once you have a good start, you're gonna get there and it's well worth it. This leads me to tip number five, avoid distressing alone time. Now, make sure your puppy doesn't have scary experiences while being left alone. You might need to recruit a dog sitter or a family friend to help care for your anxious pup if you need to leave during this time. So many puppy parents ask me, can I just let her cry? Eventually, won't you just get used to it? Hear me on this important point. A dog doesn't get more comfortable by spending more time uncomfortable. This won't be forever, but for right now, protecting her alone time is an important part of raising a puppy. One final tip on this topic. If your dog is experiencing panic, it's best to get her out of the crate immediately. So this doesn't escalate into a further negative opinion about the crate and of you being gone. Normally, we wanna wait for a moment, even a tiny second of quiet before opening the door to the crate. This teaches the dog that we're looking for calm, quiet behavior before she gets the reward of a little freedom. However, if your dog is panicking while in the crate, you can't really wait for a moment of silence to get them out. You need to get her out right away. But you can note for the future how much time your dog can tolerate. Pro tip, sometimes noises that are new to your puppy like a cabinet door gently shutting or the microwave beeping or a subtle horn honking can pique their interest enough to cause a break in the panicking. That can be your moment to open the crate door. Okay, those were my five tips, but I have one more bonus tip. Work hard at this, but don't work too fast. Keep your expectations low and your patience high. The process of going from anxiety to confidence is a little like losing weight. It might feel hard to get going, you work at it for a while with little to no results. Then you get some wins. You see some progress. Then you have a few steps back and you regroup and you see progress again and so on. This is not a linear progress of repeated success day after day. But if you look at the point where you started versus where you end up, you're gonna likely notice a trend line going in the right direction. Now that won't happen if you don't follow these tips and put in the hard work, however. Sorry, Charlie. This takes time and you guessed it, training. So if you've made it with me this far and you're still feeling like you aren't sure how to proceed, I have some good news for you. To help build up natural puppy confidence and work through normal crate training and separation issues, including separation distress, consider enrolling in my online course at the pro level. With a private Facebook group and three group Zoom calls a week, we can help you and your puppy figure out how to train for success. If your puppy has a serious case of separation anxiety, not just normal puppy settling in, I have two resources that I think might help you get started. All right, I'm gonna actually have you check out this book by Julie Naismith called Be Right Back. It's gonna be a deeper dive into what true separation anxiety looks like and the steps you'll need to take to overcome it. Now, you may not be able to solve the issue in your home with just my course or a book alone. And in that case, you're gonna need to work with a certified trainer who specializes in separation anxiety. Unfortunately, the training industry is not well regulated and you're gonna to have to do your research to make sure the trainer uses fear-free and positive methods based on behavioral science. So credentials to look for in a trainer would be fear-free certified, CPDT-KA, which means certified professional dog trainer knowledge assessed, or CBCCKA, which stands for certified behavior consultant canine knowledge assessed. There are also behaviorists who specialize in separation anxiety for those really tough cases. Now, many of these professionals do virtual lessons so you can tap into their expertise anywhere in the world. Wow, that was a lot of information at once. I hope it gave you some great information about this behavior you might be seeing in your dog. Puppy raising can be tough, but you're gonna get through it in one piece, I promise. Stick with us at How to Train a Dream Dog and we will get you there. All right, in the comments below, tell me, how your puppy's feeling about the crate and being left alone. 